G'day, I'm Tim Thompson, and welcome back to my little hobby vineyard. I've been sharing the progress of this vineyard with you, right from preparing the ground, to installing posts, to planting the vines, to training, guarding, trellising, and irrigation installation. Today's a bit of an update. We're doing our first pruning on the vineyard. So this is our first end of winter pruning before we start the new growing season. And the first year of pruning a vineyard is very, very different to any other. So I thought it was worth going over a couple of the things that I'm doing with the vines today. And I'm also gonna be giving you an update on how they went over the season because we did have a few issues. We're trying a new variety that I've not grown in the Yarra Valley before. We're using uh, Nebbiolo Mat 1 on Richter 110 rootstock because we do now have a phylloxera problem in the Yarra Valley. And some of the vine material that we got never took. Um, we didn't even get bud burst when we planted it. It just sat there dormant and just was dead basically on arrival. So I'm going to talk you through what my choices are uh, to respond to that, to try and have a consistently growing and even vineyard, which is the job of any viticulturalist. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of a pivot into the story today. So I'll keep you in touch with that later on. first job we're going to be pruning the vines so we've got two choices do we train it up to the wire after the first year or we do, do we decide to knock it back down and let the roots establish a bit better for those vines that didn't quite get to where they should be so I'm going to take you through those choices now and I'll introduce you to the basic equipment required to prune your vineyard in the first year Okay, so before we start pruning one of our successful vines that's gone all the way up the training string in the first season, let's get the basic terminology sorted. This part of the vine underneath the wire here is going to become known as the trunk. The part of the vine that is a handspan below this wire is going to become known as the crown. And this year, that's where we want to encourage all the growth to occur because we want lateral shoots coming out of this area of the vine. And we're going to be training down onto one of only two fixed wires on the entire trellis, and that is called the fruiting wire. We call it the fruiting wire because we lay down all of the wood each year onto this wire and that's where the fruit develops. So, how do we go about this? What I want to do is I want to look for canes that are at least pencil thick, that are reasonably strong, and can be supported by a root system that I know is large enough to carry a bit of canopy. That's why I'm looking for vines that only go up to the top to do this with. I'm going to leave three to four buds in that handspan area below the fruiting wire to grow. Everything else I'm going to strip off the trunk. I'm going to leave three or four buds above here to secure this cane onto the fruiting wire this year and to grow me sort of a solar panel of leaves. If I get any fruit develop here, I'm going to cut it off immediately because I don't want the vine to be stressed trying to provide a lot of sugar for the fruit. Rather, I want those leaves in the canopy to push all that sugar back down into the root system and make my vine strong for next year when I do want some fruit. So let's go about doing this. The first thing is, I'm gonna cut this vine about four buds above the fruiting wire, and I'm gonna cut through the, the top bud, what's gonna become my top bud, at an angle, cutting the bud off, but leaving a knob behind to secure my cable tie when I tie it onto the fruiting wire. Then I'm going to unwind my cane, removing any of the little tendrils that have grown throughout the year, and then I'm going to take a little bit of time here just to wind my cane around the training string thoroughly to keep the trunk section quite upright because I don't want my unilaterally trained vine to lean one way. So I'm going to try and keep it tied to this training string and then wrap it reasonably tight three or four times around the fruiting wire. I'm then going to secure it using a cheap little white plastic cable tie. These guys are perfect for this job. I know there's other ways of tying down vines, but to be honest with you, I've tried a lot of them and cable ties just work the best. You just cut them off at the end of the season and it's just a brilliant trick. I've never had one let go. Now all we have to do is finish off 
the trunk. So I want to clean off any buds that are too low that are going to grow lateral shoots where I don't want them. Because with grapevines, you want a single trunk with a nice healthy crown, a handspan below the fruiting wire to get all of your beautiful growth so that you've got a crown in the coming year. The crown is where the two shoots that make up your cordon or your arms of the vine come out of the top of the trunk. So this year, it's all about establishing the crown and it's all about feeding the root system with this lovely little solar panel of leaves. Let's tidy this up, finish the job off and see how we go. Now this is where these opening vine guards are an absolute bonus because I can just pop them open, clean out any of the old trash from last year, pardon me Mr Spider, and then all I have to do is use my secateur as sort of more of a knife and clean off the excess buds that are growing where I don't want them so that I don't end up with all these nasty lateral shoots that I have to come back and clean off during the year. The more time I take doing this and the better a job I do, the less work I'm making for myself in sort of December, January. And that's when you want to be sitting back on a lovely warm afternoon, admiring your work, not fixing up lateral canes on grapevines. All right, so now we're finished. All I have to do is seal this back up again. I'm gonna leave these guards on these vines for at least another season, just to protect them from the rabbits, protect them from the weather, um, and basically provide a hot, humid environment for the root system so that they never dry out when they're young vines. I'm gonna to continue to water these vines quite regularly for the next two years just to get that root system established and then I'll start to slowly wean them off the water so that they can stress a little bit and produce some beautiful fruit. So you can see that these are starting to take shape and they're starting to look a bit more like a vineyard. What happens when a vine doesn't make it all the way to the top of the training string? How do we treat that? Let's do that next. Now as we come down the row a little bit further you'll see that this little vine here it never quite made it. It never quite became vigorous. Leaving such a small spindly cane attached to the cordon would actually stress out the root system and could cause a decrease in eventual growth from this year. So I'll show you what we do with a small vine that only made it a little bit up past the cordon wire. The initial process is the same. Open up the vine. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to leave a couple of buds at the base and we're going to chop off the rest of that cane. Seal our guard back up together and retrain it this summer. Now that might seem like a waste of 12 months, but the reality is by bringing it back down and getting it to grow again and having another go, we're going to end up with a really firm root system in the ground. We're going to end up with a much more vigorous vine and we're going to lower the risk of it dying later in the season due to stress. So it doesn't pay to try and get every last drop out of your vines. It pays to be a bit conservative, bring them back down and start again. Now the third scenario is something you never want to see. And unfortunately, the rootstock that we purchased wasn't very vigorous and didn't really take successfully. You can see that this rootstock, although trimmed down and planted correctly and given plenty of water, these were watered daily. This rootstock never even bud burst. It never did anything. And you can see it's completely dead. So what we're going to do, because we've had 40 of these vines die, which is two rows worth, we're actually going to take the living vines out of the last two rows and we're going to condense them to this side. So the reason for taking the vines from that side and bringing them across to this side is that that side, looking down the track, is going to give me more room for expansion. And I'm choosing to plant a different variety. I'm going with Cabernet Sauvignon, which I know grows particularly well in the valley, and I've got over 30 years experience growing. So I'm going with an old familiar favorite to bring me back into production, and hopefully we'll supercharge those vines, get them up and going in no time at all, and make a wine that I'm very familiar with making. 
The next job I've got is to run out some foliage wires, particularly now as I've tied some of the vines up to the cordon, I need to make sure that I can support the eventual foliage when that starts to grow. So we're going to be running out some two and a half mil high tensile wire from White's Rural using their brand new contractor spinner that they sent to me for evaluation. Now have a look out in the next couple of weeks as well because I'm doing a big wire spinner buyer's guide. I've got five of them lined up from three different, four different manufacturers and it should be a fantastic and exciting video to produce. I can't wait to get into that. Now you will notice that I'm going to tie off the foliage wires on either side of the row. So I know some amateur people like to go and loop their wire around and go right back to the top and treat their foliage wires as one long run. I'm not a fan of doing that because what happens is when you have a predominant northerly wind like I do, you end up with the canopy pushing more on one side. So you end up with one side slack, the other side not so slack, and it just doesn't end up right. It's better to get the tension on both sides even by tying them off and treating them as separate wires. Now I'm going with two sets of flexible foliage wires, one set 300 mils above the cordon, the second set 600 mils above the cordon. And the idea is we're going to have a wire on each side of the row that is reasonably loose, but when you lift it, the act of lifting it tightens it up and it holds the foliage securely in position during the growing year. When it comes time to pruning, you obviously drop those wires down again and then use them to chase the foliage up each year. I'm going to be putting post clips on the intermediate posts in coming weeks and I'll explain how to set up that system. For today, I'm simply attaching my bottom foliage wires on every row and I'm treating each side as a separate wire. So now I'm back to the other end. All I have to do is hook up my strainers and remember, I don't have to pull this wire terribly tight at all because I actually want it to belly out and almost touch the ground in the middle of the row. These are very short rows. On long rows, it would touch the ground about three panels in or around about 20 odd metres into the row. Now what I'm going to do now, while wearing my safety glasses, is I'm going to put the top of this foliage wire up to the 30 centimetre mark again and just simply tie off another end knot. It's really important when you're tying up your foliage wires, you treat them like a normal fence wire. Because don't forget, there's going to be periods of really high winds in summertime where you've got full canopy that's going to be putting a lot of tension on these wires. So it pays to do your knots really well, and it pays to use good quality wire like this White's 2.5mm high tensile. You guys now know what I'm doing for a few hours on the weekend. I've got to finish off this pruning, get the foliage wires run out, condense my planting, and I've already ordered the SA125 clone Cabernet vines for the last two rows. And in future, we might even look at expanding the vineyard so we've got an equal planting of Nebbiolo and Cabernet Sauvignon. I hope you found this video really helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the subscribe button, giving it a thumbs up. You've got no idea how much that helps the channel. And I want to thank White's Rural for all their help in supplying the materials for today's episode. Rest in peace, little vine.